Not some Elijah and Moses over there. You believe that lie, you'll never enter in. Hallelujah. Well, now, what is this? Well, this is his nose. See that nose? Where's his eyes? He ain't got none. He's got a nose, and the, and the staves are still there, but now we've got the eyes. There's the eyes, and there's the eyes. What else is different here, Brother Don? We've got a crown. The woman is crowned with a crown of 12 stars. What's this up here, Brother Don, that crown, that, that mitre upon that high priest? The what? Priest treasures. Very good, Sister Lynette. What are the priest treasures? All the silver, gold, and all the things that they have taken and vessels of, they, of honor that they have taken in over the years. And it's stored in the priest chambers and the, in the, the treasury of the house of God. Amen. That is the crown. That's all the silver and gold and the treasury. Then what do you have? Okay, you have coming down here. Whoo, boom. Yee, boom. What's all that? 30 in here. What's that? 30 in here. What's that? Priest chambers. Amen. What's that? Oh, that's his arms. Amen. That's temple man's arms. This one ain't got no arms. This one does. Amen. How many labors you got, Brother Don? Ten. One, two, three, four, five on this side. One, two, three, four, five on that side. What's that? That's his hands. Amen. What are you saying, Brother Beard? I'm saying that's a temple man, Jesus ahead, and we the body of the Christ in the last days is going to take the world. That's what I'm saying. Well, somebody said, well, he still ain't got no legs. Hey, I got two pillars coming down right here. There's Yaquim and there's Boaz. There's the mobility of the church. In Boaz, in it is strength. Yaquim, God will establish. That's a mobility of the church going forth in the whole world. That's a reason in Moses in the book of Acts, at their beginning of that in the book of Acts, when Jesus was crucified on Pentecost, it had no legs. It's not gonna take over the whole world. But this one will. The kings of the Lord and of his Christ. Uh, all the kings of this world will become the kings of our Lord and of his Christ. And there's Yaquim uh, and there's Boaz. Uh, and it is strength. Uh, and, that, and you are the feet generation. What? Because all the wicked will be ashes and under this man's feet. This is the temple man. The first level was Jacob wrestling with the angel. It had five steps going up there. Why? Because Jacob had to put his, nest, his neck, his head up on a rock, and that rock was Christ. And it was elevated. Why? This one wasn't. This one is. You got five steps going up to it. What's five? Five's the number of grace. What's those stays coming through there? This one didn't have no breath of the nostrils. Those stays were still in there, right there in the ark. This one does. You take the staves out and they go through the veil. Why? That veil's to say his flesh. That veil is his flesh. Why? Because God, those rods coming out are the breath of his nostrils. <laughs> and he blows through the veil, which is the breath of his nostrils going through the bride of Christ, the veil, his flesh here in the earth. Amen. Amen. Have I lost you? Have I lost you? If I've lost you, what's this veil right here? What's this veil? Hebrews 10 says that veil is his flesh. Is he still got flesh up there? It said, which no man, no flesh and blood, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Then who's the flesh? Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Who is that flesh? Then where is that blast of his nostrils going through the veil, hanging, protruding through that into the sanctuary? What does that mean, Brother Don? When he has two stays pulled out pushing through the veil where you can see it in the sanctuary and see those two rods coming through. The cherubim of the glory are his eyes. What are these eyes? The beast having eyes before and behind. That's the eyes of this man. That's the eyes of your understanding being open. What, is that the eyes of the man? There's a treasure. He's crowned with that. The woman clothed with the sun and moon and under feet upon her head a crown of 12 stars. This is our schoolmaster in Christ. What is that? That's his arms. What's those labors? That's his hands, five labors on each side, and they're put on oxen to move on rollers. Amen. Somebody says they're so heavy, you couldn't move them. They are heavy because it's not you that moves, it's God. Amen. 
study this a while, it'll blow your mind. Watch this right here, the porch of judgment. Why? Because you're not only going to do the redemption miracles of Jesus over here, you're going to do the judgment miracles of Moses and uh, the kingdom miracles of Elijah. I'll send Elijah before the great ter terrible day of the Lord come, and he will restore the kingdom to the fathers and the fathers to the, uh, to the children, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's the last day work of God. What is that? The second one is Jesus. He came in the days of his flesh. Who's the third level man there, Brother Don? The church of the living God. The Alpha and A. In the third day, I will raise you up, Hebrews 6, and you will live in my sight. You. You're looking at me mighty strange. You're looking at me mighty strange. So, I'm not going to get into that tonight. We'll do that at a later time. So what are we saying here? We're saying that God, this is a woman, but over here has birthed this man. What is this man? Revelation 12. The woman clothed the sun and moon under her feet upon her head a crown of 12 stars. She brought forth a man child. Who's the man? That is the perfect man of the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ in the image. You and I in the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, take a look at it. I'm closing you right now. This is it. It's going to be it tonight. You're sitting there looking at me and you're going, wow, I'm trying to swim in this water, but I don't know. Is everybody okay? Yes. You pray about this. Somebody said, this is so deep. No, it's not. Wait till we get into the depth of it. Yeah. This is just... This is just, believe me, the tip of the iceberg. And when we show you what the works you're going to do, that's what's going to blow your socks off. So we're taking a little bit at a time. We're not going to that work right now. We're just showing what's going to happen. Take a look at Deuteronomy 31. This is the Song of Moses that you must be able to sing. Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. Amen. Are you with me, Brother Sammy? Sis Edwards, you're going amen, right? I know she's laughing at me right now. Sister Beard, you with me? You know, I had my wife going home. She said, honey, you plunged too deep too fast, and you lost everybody. I said, well, honey, you understand? She said, I don't understand what you said. My wife. Huh? I had to put my life jacket on. Believe me, I understand. Do you have to get all this at one time, Brother Don? Can you get this all at one time? When you heard it the first time, did you understand every bit of it? Don't think, don't think. Just because that water there and God's got you there, don't think you have to understand how deep it is, how much the water is, it's clear of what. Just thank God you're swimming through him. Don't worry. Oh, yes, you will. I promise you, you will. No, she's fine. I promise you will. Don't worry about it. I promise you, you will. I promise you, just as much as God is God and made this, and made this earth, you're going to understand it. I plunge you tonight deep. Why? So to realize that, hey, there's a whole lot more for us to get. When I first sat there and started seeing over three years, I'm going, oh, my God. And I started crying. Brother Don, I cried over this for a month. I mean, just about every day, all I'll do is walk around and cry. I'm thinking, oh, my God, what kind of work, what kind of a glory? Oh, Lord God, where has this been preached? I don't know. You know what the charismatic to tell you? Oh, we're going to get the latter rain. What are you going to do for it? Nothing. It's going to be just free. We ain't going to die. It's a little east. Uh, name it, claim it, snap it, and grab it. Wherever my feet walk, it's mine. You are a liar. This has a great tag with it. It's called your life going to cost you everything you got if you want it. If you don't want it, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. Just say, Brother Beard, you're over my head. I don't think it's anything for us. I'm going to stay with what I got. And I'll pray for you. There won't be any hard feelings. But if you, I know everyone in this whole world is called, that's in a true body of Christ, is called for that work. What happens if you don't know it? Then you're not walking in the light. If he's in the light, and you ain't going to be there. Somebody say, well, I'll still be saved. You want to bet? You want to bet? 
Well, if I don't, I've heard people say, if I don't know anything about it, I won't be charged with it. Oh, yes, you are. God doesn't weaken ignorance anymore. You're charged with it right now. The thing is, you better be getting it. That's the reason God's opening doors. That's not for us. It's for his word. He doesn't give a flip about a man. It's his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you doing? Are you all right? What do you think, Sister Lynette? You all right? Yes, sir. Can you break it down? No. You, you will be. Don't think, don't say, I, I did, I have to understand everything, I'm, I'm lost. No, don't think that. All we're doing is throwing it out in the water and saying, this is what we're going for, and God's going to give us the revelation. Brother Barry, I ain't going to give you the revelation. It's not going to be taught in one time. You don't go to class one time. Jesus ran his disciples around for three and a half years and then said, you're not able to bear. You're not able to bear the things that I need to tell you, but you're not. I have many things to tell you. You're not able to bear it now. What? We've been with you for three and a half years, for all, sold all, followed you, and you're telling me there's more things to come and we can't bear it now? When the cover of the Holy Ghost come, he'll lead you and guide you into all truth and show you things that will come to pass. These are the things of faith that God is getting his body Christ ready for. This is the man child in Ephesians 4, 11, that's going forth and taking the whole world. Jesus is that head. You are the body and these are your priest chambers. What happens in the great tribulation? Hide my people for a little while. Enter into thy chambers. What? into this word, chambers. Those are the priest chambers. For a little while, until mine anger, until mine anger be overpassed, and my anger ends in, the indignation be overpassed, and my anger end in their destruction, not yours, their destruction. But you have to hide yourself in God. Those are the priest chambers that he's already prepared for us in his word by knowing his word. I'm telling you that when everybody else is starving in famine, pestilence, sword, and noisome beast, while everybody else is starving, don't go out and plant you a garden and go buy you a hilltop in, in Wyoming and get out, out of the city because wherever you hang your hat, wherever you are, God's going to drop a steak sandwich down in the morning for you, meat and bread, and in the afternoon he's going to do the same thing by a miracle. Somebody said, I don't believe it. You won't be there then. Amen. He's going to feed you by a miracle every day. And then you're going to know what it means by every man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He knows how to save the righteous out of destruction. And there's going to be such a great destruction. And honey, it's already coming. Muslim, we think this is going to be a little thing that's going to pass. They know and they're scared to death on the grids and the computer going down. And when it goes down, Muslims will be, Islam will hit the streets and sack every store, can kill people like you got. And they're scared to death. How can we keep it up? How can we keep it up? What's going to keep them from hacking it? There's more fear out there. You know, y'all remember Clint Walker on Cheyenne? Y'all remember a big man called Cheyenne? I'm way older than y'all are. Okay, you do? Well, Clint Walker's about 80, 85, he's 88 years old now. And it's an old G-rated show, a Western. Cheyenne, Clint Walker, great big six foot six, 200 and, uh, yeah. All right. They ask him, why is the popularity of your show coming back so much? You only ran six years on TV. Why? It was the first Western on TV that went for one hour. Not Gunsmoke, not the Rifleman, not Bonanza. It was Cheyenne Bodie. That's right. And Cheyenne Bodie was always the guy with a white hat. Everything of wickedness and evil and had a moral to the story. G-rated, no cussing, no killing. You know, he only killed the bad guy. No cussing. And it's one of the most popular shows coming back and ask him why. Why? He said because it was a time when people could 
could lay down their head at night and not worry. It was a time that they, it was Eisenhower's day, and, and uh, uh, in the 50s and 60s, it was a time that they felt at peace and they felt secure, but now nobody does. Well, we do. You do. You lay your head down at night and you go to sleep. But there's politicians up there that are aging right and left because they know what it is. They know the economic collapse is coming. They know it. I mean, it's going to hit when it does. And while everybody else is starving, so help me God. This preacher goes down on the book called Heaven and Earth Tonight. You will be fed. God will feed you by a miracle. Amen. It's going to pay to serve God in that day. And you will be prepared for it. It'll be a big thing to them out there. To you, this is just God. God taking care of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's going to show himself God in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show one thing here, and I'm going to 20, 15 minutes. I've got to get Brother Sammy out. He's got 4 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah unto God. Sister Beard's got some things to do. She's got to go and have some blood work tomorrow. Hallelujah unto God. I know a lot of y'all have. But let me tell you, it's going to pay to serve God. That's all I'm going to say. Take a look here. This is the song Moses talks about. When is this? Moses commanded. Look at verse 10. Verse 9, Deuteronomy 31, Moses wrote this law, delivered it to the priest. Then the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of beliefs, in the Feast of Tabernacles. Was he going to show it to him in Pentecost? Or in Tabernacles? This is Tabernacles. Upon whom then? We're in the season that God's going to show you the book. He's going to lead you and guide you into all the truth. These are the most exciting times to be in. Somebody said, I wish I could have been there whenever he brought them out of Egypt. Nope, I'll take it now. Somebody said, I wish I'd been there on the day of Pentecost. Nope, I'll take it now. These are the greatest times to be alive that there's ever been. Take a look over here. When all Israel has come to appear before the Lord thy God, when is that? In the third day, I will raise you up. You will live in my sight. You're coming into what? The Holy of Holies. You're going to experience everything that Jesus died for on the cross. You are going to receive. Not those ones in Pentecost. You are. Until the coming of the Lord. And letting God it into all truth. They didn't have the mobility. They weren't going to take the whole world. This one will. The kings of this world become the kings of our Lord and of his Christ. There's the legs of mobility, Yaqin and Boaz, and, they, and it goes into a lot in the chapters, the gonads, and all that, and the pomegranates, and all that, and the fruit. All of that thing shows of the glory of God in the last days. We will not get into each of that yet. Take a look over here and look at verse 19. What is this that you're showing me? It is the song of Moses. Look at verse 19. Now, therefore, write you this song for me or for you? For you. And teach it to the children of Israel. We're teaching it now. Do you have to get it at the first lesson? No. Please do not think I've got to get this all in one setting and Brother Beard will never say this again and God will never run it by me again. Honey, he's going to run us by this mountain over and over and over and over and over until we all get it. Amen. Somebody said, well, I don't have a formal education. can't read or write. It don't matter. It don't matter. Somebody said, you use a double negative. No, I ain't. I'll spell Dornell dead, D-E-D, -E -D, bless God, and God will still have to honor it. Amen. It ain't in your human intellect, son. This is in the spirit of man. I've got to say one thing I've got to show you here. Body, soul, and spirit. You have that intuition, things that you've learned outside of God. Conscience, purged from dead works to serve the living God. The body of sins of the flesh destroyed. Where is faith? Where is faith stored in you. In the combine? Is that for the wheat or the barley? I love you, brother. Come on. Show me where. Brother, listen, listen to what he says. 
Faith is stored where? In the spirit, in, in here, in your uh, redone heart. That's right. Show me, point to intuition. Intuition of things that you have learned without your human intellect by hearing and hearing by the word of God and it's held in your intuition, in your spirit. But before that happens, what happens? What happens if your conscience is not purged from dead works to serve the living God? Then what's going to happen to the faith? It's going to quench it. It's going to the body of the sins of the flesh are going to quench it. It's going to hold and hold it back where you can't get it. Amen. What are you saying, Brother Beard? We have to be presented blameless, both spirit, soul, and body. In other words, I can't just work right here and say I can have my mind, imagination, intellect on anything I want to have of the world and think I'm going to get God. It's got to be on God here, on God here, and this flesh has to be sanctified holy. Amen. So any old way just won't get it. All I'm saying is pray for one another. The affection for a righteous man availeth much. The chariot of every one of us abound as one toward another, which the ever joint supplies to the edifying of itself and the body of itself in love. It's through us praying for one another, lifting each other up, that God edifies or blesses us or lets us get higher in him. And as we do, it's not of the faith that God gives us revelation. It is through the good works that you do. The more you do good to him that doeth, and here are the words of the book of this prophecy. God said to him that hath, in other words, not only a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word, I'll give him more. So the more you do good to the body of Christ and the more that you let the word out and the more you can give out in the word of God, the more God's going to give you. So Paul said, I have not shunned declaring to you all the counsel of God because when I do, I'm going to get more. You have to be willing to go all the way in God. It can't be part of the way. It has to be all spirit, soul, and body. This song is the song of Moses. And when, take a look over here at verse 26. Take this book of the law. That's the song of Moses. You're going to read about that in Revelation 15. We won't get into it tonight. The song of Moses, song of the Lamb. Take this book of the law, put it in the side of the ark. Not in the ark, in the side of it in a side pocket. Amen. Why? That it may be there for a witness against you. Why? Because I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I'm yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? Did Moses die? No, he didn't. Yes, he did. And there he died. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes of officers that I might speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. That's the reason when I'm getting booted out of church, the first thing I do is I call heaven and earth to record against them. I'm calling this blood against that person or against that church. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way. What is the way? Jesus. One God. What do you do? You hew yourself out of other gods, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. What days? The latter days, the last days, these days. With cunningly devised fables, denying the only Lord God. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands denominations, the work of man's hands. I had a man, uh, a man up there in, our, in uh, Oklahoma sent a word back to one of our people that were up there. Brother Beard, we can't do that because he don't believe in denominations. No, I don't, never have, never will. I don't believe in denominations. I believe in Jesus. Amen. What's the denominations going to do for you? It's ran by man. They elevate within. It's political. It's not of God. That's the reason God never ordained a denomination. Somebody said, you have one. No, we don't. It's a fellowship. We'll never have a denomination. We will never rule in another church, 
ever. That's what I told all of them over there in Africa, India, Pakistan, Nepal. We will not. You run your own church. You have your own government. We don't get into that. You have a local body of elders that run that church. That's many pastors, not one pastor, not a one-man show. Pastors, elders of the church, presbyters, not one man. Hallelujah. And whenever, and then it says, he says here, and Moses spake in the ears of this congregation of Israel, the words of this song until they were ended. And that's where it ends in Revelation 15, the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Moses' song started in coming out of Egypt. Christ or Passover sacrifice for us. When is Passover? Jesus said on the, on, on the preparation of the Passover, he died. Where was that in the word of God? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's that season right there. This was a type and shadow of the real. The real is Jesus Christ, our Passover. He is that sacrificial lamb. That started this right here. Pentecost, it had no legs. It had no priest chambers. It had no crown. Amen. They, didn't, they weren't led into all this word. Paul said, I, saw, I was caught up to heaven, to the third heaven. And I saw what? I saw a man. What man did he see? Somebody said it was Paul. No, it wasn't. I saw a man, whether in the spirit or out of the spirit, out of the body or out of the body, in the body, out of the body, I could not tell. Such as one caught up to the third heaven and saw things. What are things? The things of faith. Saw things that was unlawful for a man to speak. This is Hebrews 9, 5, the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat of which now, Paul said, we cannot now speak particularly. Why? Because it wasn't time. Paul was in this, in Pentecost, not here in Tabernacles. Now we're proclaiming those things that Paul could not because it was in the wrong season. Is this too deep? I have one man, I've said, did you think this is Star Trek, Buck Rogers? This is some uh, Star Trek? And he said, yep, sure do. Walked out the door. Two months later, whatever, he's dead. Amen. And I, I don't say that flippantly, but I mean, is that true, Brother Don, or not? So please, if you don't understand something, give God time. Don't start running your mouth. Say, you know what people do when they don't understand? They say, you know what? That's a cult. They're going to deep, deep things, and that ain't God. Oh, really? Okay, now watch this now. What you're saying is true. All this was under the law, wasn't it? Both of them. Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple were both under the law. But that was the natural. When Jesus, when, that's a good question. When Jesus died on the cross, that natural law, he bumped it up to the spiritual. There's still a natural Israel going down there. And if you want to see what God's doing in the spiritual, just take a look at the natural because they run hand in hand. Amen. When they're trying to destroy Israel, they're trying to destroy the church. What you sign in the natural, as goes Israel after flesh, so goes Israel after the, after the spirit. Amen. But, both of these were over here and under the law. But there come a time that these were going to be fulfilled. Those feasts were feasts of the Lord, not feasts of the church, not a feast of Israel. Feasts of the Lord. So that was a type and shadow. The real came, that feast of Passover came when Jesus died on the cross. Now we're in the New Testament. Where did that Passover take place? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He died. We saw it. Then we come into the book of Acts, Pentecost, still in that first month, 50 days after, but still in that season of Passover. 50 days after first fruits, Pentecost, Shabbat. Now, long time elapses. A long time, 2,000 years ago, God did this in the body of his flesh. 
Now he's bringing us into this. What's the type and shadow here? What's the real? You, the body of Christ, is going to have legs, the mobility of the church through all the world, priest chambers, crowned with glory, and you're going to go forth and preach this gospel to all the world. Amen. Ah, it hit you, didn't it? Ah, it hit you. Now, you know I love you. Do you think any different? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I feel stupid asking questions. The only way you're going to learn this thing, I ask a thousand questions. I ask so many questions. They said, you better quit asking questions because you're being disobedient. Why? Because I ask a question. I want to know. And if you can't answer it, say, I don't know. What do you think, Sister Edwards? It opens up that word to a whole different light, doesn't it? You just made my day. Oh, believe me, what we fix and see, ain't nobody ever seen anything like it, what we fix and see. Ain't nobody. God's going to show himself God, and he is a mighty God. He's going to show forth his power and his glory. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill all the earth as the waters cover the seas. All shall know him from the least to the greatest. This is the days we're living in.